In this example we're going to take a look at the Create Weave gadget. So uh, to start the process I'm going to create just a simple blank new file. So click Create New File and I'm going to create a job which is a foot square. So I've got 12 inches uh, width, 12 inches height and about an inch thick. I'm going to apply that so we have our one foot square working area. And then I'm going to go straight up to the gadgets section here. If I click on the gadgets we get the installed gadgets and one of the ones that's installed by default here is the Celtic Weave Creator. So I'm going to click on that and it opens up um, the Celtic Weave Creator's dialog uh, which has got several sections to it. So let's have a look at what all the sections do. The first thing we can uh, have a look at is we've got a grid indicated up here with this um, image and we can set this grid to be any size we like. So we can we can have a grid uh, which is six by six columns, you'll see that the columns really relate to uh, where the crossings will go. So in this case we've got one, two, three, four columns here and four rows down this shape. Uh, we could change that to six by six here, I've entered. Uh, so I click update grid size and the image automatically updates, show me six by six. Uh, and the final value here is how big in real units is one row and one column. So if, for example, we know we've got a foot square um, working area to play with um, that we'd created earlier on, so I'm going to make four columns by four columns again, and I'm going to make the grid size three inches. So that ultimately this is going to be three times four inches across, so it's going to be 12 inches across and 12 inches high, uh, which we know will fit in our working area. So that's great. I can create some cross sections here. These are just default ones that the wizard will create for you. Um, in our case, we can also use it. We can create a cross section ourselves, uh, having finished with this, which I'll demonstrate just at the end. But let's go with this fancy cross section. So if I drag the dialog just over to the edge here, so you can see the 2D view underneath. As I click Create Cross Section, nothing really magical happens. It's just put that cross section here, ready for us to use later on. Okay, so let's. Uh, if we click apply now we'll just get the crisscross grid as we've designed it up here. So I'm going to just drag that back to the side and click apply and you can see in the 2D view now the artworks created for that grid. But the really um, cool thing about the Celtic Weave Creator is that this diagram is, is interactive. So I can actually click on the crossing points and adjust what they do. So um, we can every time I click on one it'll change the crossing um, mode for that particular point. So in this case we're crossing in both um, vertically and horizontally. If I click it again, it'll it'll sever the vertical uh, crossings and only have horizontal links. If I click it again, it'll only have vertical links and sever the horizontal ones. And if we click again, it goes back to the beginning. So this cycles through the three options you've got for each of your crossing points. And those three options is all that's really required to, to create some quite interesting shapes. So I'm just going to create this with little isolated corners to it, like so. And when I click Apply, you'll see it updates the artwork in the 2D view for me. And that's really all there is to a basic uh, weave. We've got the artwork created at the right size, uh, and we've created ourselves a cross-section as well. So I'm going to close that form down. And you can see we have all the bits necessary to do a weave. Uh, so to do the weave, we're going to go to the Modeling tab. So I click on the Modeling tab here, and the tool we're after is up here the extrude a shape tool. So when I click on extrude here we get the extrude and weave form uh, and the first thing we need to do is identify for the form which uh, bits of our artwork represent the rails along which we're going to extrude the shape. So um, the create um, the Celtic Weave Creator has actually grouped those rails for us automatically so we can click anywhere on there and that group will become selected and I can just click this use the selection now. So with them selected tell it to use the selection as the rails um, and they get marked up for us so we can see that they're going to be the rails and the next thing is to click now on the profile uh, so I just select the profile and as I roll the mouse over the rails you'll see that it indicates to me that I can drop that profile on these rails uh, with a little tick uh, option. Uh, if you want to get into the more detailed version of the extrude and weave the reason for this sort of extra step here is that we can have many cross sections at different parts of our weave and the software will automatically blend the changes between the different shapes so there's an awful lot of 
of things for you to explore on this form but this is just getting us started so now we've we've set up everything really pretty much as we want uh, with one crucial thing let me just apply that so we can look at the results the result itself is still quite interesting so that's created for us a nice geometrically interesting shape where everything's crossing over but it's not weaving and the reason it's not weaving is we haven't set the weave under and over crossing section here so I also just need to turn that on and uh, we've got two options here I'm going to go with the add base but you can try both and see which one you like uh, and we click apply again and now it will actually automatically work out when to go under and over um, the shapes as it crosses to match the diagram that we had uh, in the original form so that's our basic weave done there um, at the moment it's rounding these corners off if we look at the artwork here they were quite sharp corners um, so if we want we can just uh, fix that up by choosing create square corners here so these are all just options that you can choose depending on essentially what your preferred finished result is so in this case I quite like having those nice mitered sharp corners so I'll switch that on let's close that down I'm going to go back to the 2d view now uh, and I'm going to grab the uh, actual component uh, so I've clicked it twice just like any other drawing element and I'm going to drag that across the side so we can keep that component now it's not in our workspace but we can just keep it for later and the reason is that I want to show you that the there's another trick up the sleeve of the weave creator which is that uh, if I just open it again it will go back to the default um, arrangement ready for us to create a new weave but if I select a previously created weave like this one which we've not modified in any way so it's uh, still grouped and we've not edited any of the vectors that emerged from the weave creator now with that selected if I choose the weave creator again it will automatically uh, pick up the original design and lay it all out for us again for us to edit so we actually have the ability to dynamically edit the weave uh, so I'm going to come back in here and we're going to have a little play with the design again uh, obviously you can make a better fist of many of these designs than I'm sure I'm going to but anyway so the point is here let's make it at least symmetrical uh, what have I done there and give it that one uh, something like that right so what I want to show you essentially is that we've modified that click apply and our modification comes up here so now we have the edited version and we can go again so this time we can go back to the extrude a shape with the center line there use the selection that I had highlighted drop the profile on check that we've got weave sets I'm going to use square corners again and apply that and we'll get ourselves a very different pattern a completely different weave shape so um, that's the basics out of the the weave uh, the final thing I want to show you is that you can obviously use this just as the starting point of your own design so we've used the, the cross-section that emerged directly from the weave pattern but you can also of course just create your own cross-section so I'm going to create a rectangle here uh, select the rectangle I'm going to use node editing now so I press N to go to node editing hover over the lower span we need this to be an open shape to represent the cross section so I'm going to hover over that press D to delete it and then I'm simply going to use the um, virtual midpoints here to start making a slightly more interesting shape so I can just drag those as I drag those they become midpoints in their own right so you can kind of adjust these as you see fit so we get a slightly more spiky shape uh, and now I can go back to my extrude and weave select my original rails but this time drop my new custom cross section on there and apply that and we get a weave based on the same rails uh, but using the custom cross section if I want to scale the shape as opposed to adding a base you can see at the moment it's adding a base underneath my shape so my own cross section does not vary to create the weave but I can have it scale the shape as well and then it'll actually just make the shape go blend away to nothing and come up to full height and blend away to nothing so these are all options that you can play with to produce uh, different sorts of um, variations on the theme but hopefully you can see that the weave creator is a, is a great starting point for laying out these sort of Celtic designs